kind of about solving problems. It's, it's really like imaginary problems or imaginary people because you're inventing a product that doesn't exist yet and you're creating it for someone who doesn't know they need to buy it or they want to buy it. So um, that's the really fun thing about industrial design. That's why it carries over so well to entertainment design because you're effectively designing an experience, you know, by designing an object or an experience itself for someone that's not yourself. I started, I went to Art Center College of Design as an industrial designer. And I sort of always knew about Art Center because my dad went to school at Art Center as an illustrator. So I sort of always had the illustration side, uh, which he taught me about, and I knew about Art Center, but I was more into cars. I quickly realized I didn't really want to work in an automotive studio. Uh, so I started to do freelance work. Um, my best friend, Neville Page, and myself, we started a studio the day after graduation in San Francisco. And basically the idea of starting our own consultancy the day after graduation might have seemed like really arrogant, but our idea was if we fail, we're going to end up right back where we are now. Yeah, Photoshop came in like mid 90s and then Craig Mullins and those guys, those were the very, very first people to ever sketch, you know, and paint digitally using a mouse. And that was 20 years ago. So if you think back, you go, wow, Photoshop's really only been around 20 years. Um, really as a functional artistic tool, maybe 15 years, you know, 10, you know, not, wasn't a lot. It was really just starting to hit end of the 90s. Well, I think computers got faster, right? And then all of a sudden, then the games got sexier, right? And then all of a sudden it became, oh, we need to invent these worlds. Oh, we need to, that means we need to design what's in this world, right? And then all the designers started to say, hey, these things look kind of cool. I wonder if I could start to do that, right? So then I think that was the big switch. Yeah, the, the gaming thing has evolved to be more and more photoreal. So it's becoming more and more like doing the real job um, as we would do it for designing for real people, real places, real stuff. And so I think it's gotten closer and closer to reality, which is again, was the original job anyway. Um, and so I think it just, the trend just looks like it's continuing that way. At the same time, some games are taking the approach of stylizing as opposed to pursuing the photoreal. And so I think that there are, there are two like tracks one, there'll be always the AAA title that goes after photorealism, right? More and more movie quality, more and more realism. That's the ultimate goal. There's another track that will say, no, you know, even though we have more computing power, I don't know, maybe let's use it in a different way. And so let's focus in on uh, more artistic style. And so I think that, that the rise of games that have more animated feel, I think that those are quite interesting and more the realm of, say, the illustrator artist, you know, the concept art side of it, as opposed to the concept design side. I think for the real world is going to be more concept design. Um, the other side is going to be concept art with a focus on style and color. Um, so I think that there's definitely two avenues. That are, what It's just maturing into a wider range of style. I'd say that our concept design and concept art industry is in its infancy still. So even though we say, oh, it's maybe a little saturated, it's, 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 over, it's competitive, well, every good job in the world is competitive. Try to be a musician. Think about saturated, right? So we're nowhere near sort of the level of maturity in our industry as, say, the music industry or graphic design or architecture, right? So I think that we're just at the very, very, very beginning of our discipline. If you have strong skills, you can always find work. So I think, yes, maybe it feels saturated for young artists that aren't maybe as qualified as they need to be. But for, I think, the students that are um, graduating and are qualified and have a strong portfolio, I think there's many more options than they've ever had. There are many, many more opportunities, but there's also much, much more competition because it's so easy to connect. The challenge for today's you know, young designer or student is to take their one, learn what the profession requires, and then hone their skills, meaning develop professional practices um, to a high enough level that allows them to pursue the career that they're interested in. But without those skill sets and without the right sort of thinking about the job, they're not gonna have daily value to a bigger studio. You are who you are, but you have to develop your own perspective on something, your own, you know, your own voice, your own problem-solving ability, your own creativity, your own originality, right? 
Um, I think the competition actually helps you to get better. It benchmarks where you're at and forces you to be sort of brutally honest and look. And that's what I actually really like about what you guys have at ArtStation. You can see, oh, this is where I need to be. 